ordinary till you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, thanks for joining us on Court TV News this hour. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. The federal government has shifted resumption date for both public and private schools nationwide to October 13. Education Minister Ibrahim Shikau met on Tuesday with state commissioners of education over the development. They also said to officials of the health ministry in attendance, deliberation centered around the Ebola and how to stem its spread. Speaking before the closed-door session, the Education Minister noted that the disease is too serious to be treated with levity. The Ebola matter, the apprehension, the concern, the community, the parents, and all those of us in the education industry. But for us to be well-guided, and to be well informed, our ministry decided to invite the people in charge, that is the Federal Ministry of Health, to address us, tell us what Ebola is all about, what measures we need to take, not only at our personal levels, but in particular as it concerns the innocent children that are placed under our care because this is our most important primary responsibility the well-being of the children that are placed in trust in our hands and we have the moral responsibility to ensure that before recording these children, we put in place measures that will assure parents that there is safety and we allay the fears of the parents. Nigeria now has only one known case of Ebola virus, 38, 28 days after the disease was brought into the country by the late Liberian American Patrick Sawyer. This is because two of the remaining patients have been discharged from the isolation ward in Lagos. Health Minister Oyebuchuchu could disclose this at a press briefing in Abuja. Today is the 38th day since the Ebola virus disease was imported into Nigeria by a Liberian American. As of today, the 26th of August 2014, Nigeria has had 13 cases of Ebola virus disease, including the Indes case. Of these 13, five, including the Indes case, unfortunately, did not survive the disease and are now late. However, seven of the infected persons were successfully managed at the isolation ward in Lagos and have been discharged home. Two of the treated patients, a male doctor and a female nurse, were discharged yesterday, uh, both of them primary contacts of the um, American, uh, Mr. Patrick Sawyer. Uh, they, both of them were discharged yesterday evening, the 25th August 2014, having satisfied the criteria for discharge. As I speak to you, Nigeria has only one confirmed case of Ebola virus disease, a secondary contact of Mr. Patrick Sawyers and spouse of one of the physicians who participated in the management of the index case. She is stable, but still on treatment at the isolation ward in Lagos. 
Meanwhile, the Lagos state government has again provided status update on efforts aimed at curtailing the dreaded Ebola virus disease. The State Ministry of Health reiterates the collaborative containment and case management efforts of the state and federal government at a meeting with journalists in Lagos. Anita Fatuji has more. Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Jude Idris, says distortion of facts and how tried falsehood being spread on the social media has been a major challenge creating unnecessary and unavoidable anxiety and worries within in the polity. A critical and pervading challenge is the issue of rumors and false stories being disseminated, especially via the social media. These continue to create unnecessary and unavoidable anxiety and worries within the polity. They have the capacity to undermine the efforts being made to contain and manage this outbreak as those who ought to present themselves for treatment may get discouraged. Malign government in the face of residents and first stigmatization of individuals and businesses. 321 contacts, according to him, have been screened and tracked with 159 others discharged on completion of the 21-day surveillance. Cumulatively, there are 13 confirmed, including an imported case and one suspected case. The suspect cases are awaiting confirmatory test results to inform the next line of action. Currently, there are only two cases, one confirmed, one suspected in isolation at our treatment facility in mainland hospital, Yaba. He, however, emphasized that there is a need to report every death and obtain Ebola-free documentation to facilitate the transportation of outbound corpses from the state. Under these circumstances, there is a need to report every death and obtain Ebola-free documentation to facilitate the transportation of outbound corpses from the state. Those deaths that have, that have genuine documentation, proper death certificates, they need to be given some kind of documentation here for them to allow them to move out of state to Forbera, to other states. The commissioner warns the public not to stigmatize all cases and contacts that have been given a clear bill of health and urges them to facilitate their reintegration into the society. Anita Fatunji, Core TV News, Lagos. Ebola. The United Nations Ebola convoy, David Nabarro, says the fight against the epidemic was a war which could take six more months as its global health body claimed the disease was affecting an unprecedented number of medical staff. Nabarro, a British physician, physician appointed by the United Nations to coordinate the global response to the crisis, was in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, for the fifth day of a tour of the region. Ebola. It's not a battle, it's a war that will require everybody working together hard, effectively. I hope it will be done in six months, but we have to do it until the job is complete. I'm obviously doing everything I can to combine my understanding with a really strong request to everybody Help us find a way to continue having airlines fly into the capital cities and the provinces of the affected countries. The purpose of this visit was to understand the nature of the outbreak as it is now and to identify ways in which the response can be stepped up so that the outbreak can be stopped as quickly as possible. Findings are as follows. It appears that the outbreak is still advancing. And it's advancing in many parts of the country. The way to stop the outbreak is well known here by everybody in government and in the partners. But the response is complicated.
UN officials have pledged to step up efforts against the leather tropical virus, which has affected more than 2,600 and killed 1,427 since the start of the year. President Goodluck Jonathan led members of his cabinet to pay tribute to former Information Minister Dora Coyley at a Requiem Mass, the Mass which was held at Our Lady Queen Pro Cathedral Area 3 in Abuja, also had former head of state Yakubu Gawon in attendance. Speaking at the event, Jonathan described the later Queenly as the embodiment of selfless service. Today, our dear sister Dora has left us, but to my brother, Dr. Queenly, I've also listened to Bishop Cooker's uh, sermon on the virtues of a good wife characteristics of husbands, we have to thank God for my children, the children of our late sister. Yes, we are mourning your mother. It's not easy for you to lose source a mother, but you should be very happy because our works, our interactions with men have given you an identity that silver and gold cannot give you. Her addressing She's a Nigerian woman wherever she goes. Her character and disposition. Her love and passion for the country. It's a lady that will hardly leave her memories. Let me also condole my countrymen and women because Dora is one of these few Nigerians that have made the whole country proud. I thank you, my brothers and sisters. May her soul rest in peace. You're watching Cool TV News on the hour. More stories coming up shortly after this break. Stay with us. You can now watch Cool TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.cooltvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Welcome back. Members of the Enugu House of Assembly on Tuesday impeached the Deputy Governor of the State, Sunday Oyebuchi. Oyebuchi's impeachment followed his indictment by a seven-man panel of inquiry which investigated allegations levelled against him by the lawmakers. The panel and its report held that Oyebuchi was guilty of the allegations brought against him. Members of the House adopted the report of the panel after the House leader, Odeo Koye, moved a motion for its adoption. Hude Okoye, who sponsored the motion on notice alongside 21 other members of the House, noted that the motion was in line with the provisions of Section 188, Subsection 9 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, which provided for the removal of members of the executive arm of government. The motion called for a resolution of the House to consider the report of the investigation panel on the allegations of gross misconduct by the Deputy Governor and that the House, having carefully considered the report of the investigative panel, adopted it. Oyebuchi was accused of running an illegal poultry in his official residence as an offence according to a resolution of the House and also refusing to represent Governor Sullivan Chime at official functions in spite of a directive from the governor. The deputy governor had denied the allegations, insisting that it was witch hunted for expressing an intention to contest the seat of the Enugu East Senatorial Zone, which is said to be reserved for the governor's chief of staff, Ifoma Owobodo. The crisis rocking the All Progressives Congress since the emergence of John Oyego as its national chairman in June this year worsened as one of its national chairmanship aspirants at the party's convention last June, Tom Ikimi, has announced his withdrawal from the party. Ikimi, in a statement made available to journalists in the new city, the Edo State Capital, says the decision is with immediate effect. He had insisted to lead the party, which has one of the founding fathers. The APC leadership has in the last two months also paid Ikimi several visits in his Edo country home.
to persuade him not to abandon the party. Ikimi had in the last few months stayed away from all APC party activities, bringing speculations to bear that he has quit the party. The decision confirms the speculation that he is no longer a member of the APC. He was, however, not officially uh, announced his next political move. As the People's Democratic Party in Oshun State prepares to file its petition to challenge the victory of Raoul Faragweshala at the August 9 governorship election, the second advisor to the legal committee of the PDP, Burinwa Abidoye, has dumped the party for the APC. He also described PDP's case at the tribunal as dead on arrival. Rashid Rashid has more. It is in the norm of politics in Nigeria to experience defection, especially when a major election is on its way. But it becomes spectacular if such happens after the election. Bolani Wabidoe, until his defection, was the legal advisor to the Oshun State PDP and the secretary of the PDP's legal committee. Welcoming Abidoye amidst pomp of pageantry at the APC secretariat, Boye Gafa Modun, the secretary of the party, says Abidoye's defection is a vindication of Arabe's victory. <laughs> the party for what the party is and what the party has, what the party has achieved. Abido has been a politician in the state and he has been watchful of what, what has been going on before, during and after the election. So he's coming over to us today is a vindication of what we have been saying. It's a testimony to the hard work of Obeni Rao Farebe Shola. B. Adelowo, the chairman of the APC in Oshun, says the coming of Abido is a homecoming for the former legal advisor as this points to his progressive mindset. If the legal advisor of the party, PDP, is coming to us and he's telling us this is the truth, that there's no point going to the tribunal to waste his own time, that I'm coming over to join the party, the good party, that I want to join the government that's going to develop this state. So it's not, it's not a pushover person. So somebody is joining the party for the best, based on its principle, based on the fact that the PDP lost the election, currently. And this is the part that won the election. Let me go and join and make the, the, the states for better. As the PDP heads for tribunal, Abidoye says PDP loss in August 9th election is natural. Thus, its loss at the tribunal is imminent. With the result of the election, it is clear, convincingly clear, that our strong people have spoken. It is left for the tribunal to determine. But what I know very well is that cases in court are not fabricated. They are placed on facts and figures. The facts and figures on ground show that Ogbeni Rao Fadi Soja Rebosola has won convincingly with people's foot and genuine foot of some people. And I think whatever the decision of the tribunal will be at the end of the day should not be discussed at this level. But what I know is that nobody can fabricate anything at the tribunal level. With an arrowhead like Abidoye abandoning the PDP challenge at the tribunal, one can only imagine the outcome of the case the party intends to file to challenge Arabeshala's victory at the August 9th governorship poll. Rashid Rashid, RTV News, Oshobo. Meanwhile, the Oshun State People's Democratic Party has described as unfortunate the defection of its former legal advisor, Bolarua Abidoye. The publicity secretary of the PDP in Oshun State, Bola Jao, says Abidoye's defection points to the fact that he has been unfaithful to the PDP prior to the August 9 election. It's unfortunate that he had decided to do what he did. What is most unfortunate is that this is coming barely 16 days after the gubernatorial election. And this will put to very serious question his uh, commitment to the party, ab initio. The, the success, the victory that awaits PDP at the tribunal, he has nothing to take away from it. I assure you, we have unassailable evidence on ground that will unearth all the iniquities surrounding the so-called victory of our opposition. He added that Abidoe's defection will not in any way dim the chances of the PDP at the tribunal. 
President Goodluck Jonathan on Tuesday engaged the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Adamo Moazo, and some state governors elected on the party's platform in a closed-door meeting. The agenda of the meeting, which was held inside the presidential villa Abuja, was not disclosed. None of those who attended also spoke with journalists at the end of the meeting, which was also attended by the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Pius Aim. The PDP governors who attended the meeting include the chairman of the party's governors forum, Gutswila Pabio of Akwaibum State, Leah Lemoke of Cross River State, Ibrahim Shema of Kasina State, and Ibrahim Dankwabo of Gombe State. Lagos State Government says there is no intention of reversing the state traffic law. Governor Mabatunde Fashola said that these at a stakeholders' meeting with transport operators in the state. Abiola Oluwali was there. This report is presented from our studios. In the words of governance, the enactment of Lagos Road Traffic Law in 2012, which barred commercial motorcyclists known as Okada riders out of the 10,000 roads in the state, has to a larger extent cap crimes and avoidable loss of lives. The stakeholders' meeting is organized to find a common ground between government and motorcyclists in the enforcement of the law. Speaking on behalf of the commercial motorcyclist, Ade Kweson pleaded with the state government to relax the enforcement of the law in areas like Ikorodu, Ekbe and Badagri. He also decried unseasoned harassment of their members by law enforcement agents across the state. They are not even they go to houses at night. Some of houses that I want to address where these men went to houses at night to live. To wake up a corner bike and took your bike and back on it. Is that part of the enforcement? And several other cases. Clarifying that the traffic law is meant to ensure safety of residents, Fashola asserts that the Lagos State Government will not sit back and watch commercial motorcyclists breach existing law in the state. The governor, however, taxed them on voluntary compliance with the traffic law. The next presidential election in the United States will present an interesting candidate. Find out more on the story after this break. One continent, 54 countries, over 2,000 languages, but united with similar interests. As news breaks, we give you in-depth analysis around Africa every Monday on Core TV News. Welcome back. The next presidential election in the United States will present an interesting look as Jeb Bush, the popular son of former president, Judge Bush looks a lot like a presidential candidate traveling the country meeting voters. The former Florida governor admits he looks back fondly on his time in public office. Now many Bush supporters are recommending he takes a path trodden by many former governors and run for president. That family includes two former presidents, Judge Bush's brother, Judge W. Bush, and his father, Judge H. W. Bush. But unlike the previous presidents, Bush, uh, Bush speaks fluent Spanish, and that's helped boost his popularity with Hispanic voters. The Republican Party knows that they need a candidate that can connect with Hispanics and connect in a real way, in a believable way. And Jeb Bush may be that person. Bush is treading a tight rope on immigration, an issue important to many Hispanics, with some of his fellow Republicans taking a hard line on the influx of child migrants from Central America. Jeb Bush says he plans to make his decision on a presidential run later this year. 
And that wraps it. This hour in court TV news journals again at the top of the hour, 11 o'clock actually, for more stories. Cool Digest kickstart in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>